It's another cable show about God. Your host is Dr. Craig Johnson, pastor of Bethel Christian Fellowship in Agoura Hills and professor in residence at Chalcedon Christian Academy. This morning, I want to encourage you to never underestimate your personal influence. Every one of us are famous. Did you know that? You are famous. There's two kinds of fame. There's extensive fame. That's where everybody knows who you are. You're Larry King, or you're a political leader, or you're a big preacher on TV. Or That's extensive fame. But there's also, secondly, intensive fame. Now, most of us will never be extensively famous, but we are famous intensively. You're famous to your children. You have an invisible reality called influence, and it is constantly eking out of your pores. There is no choice. You have to realize that you are influencing everyone all the time. Now, no pressure, but sometimes, I don't know about you, I just like to curl up in a ball and be absolutely isolated. You cannot ever escape the reality of your personal influence. We, we are all interdependently connected. Now listen to our text of scripture. If you look at your program today, it's from Romans 14 verse 7 and it says, for none of us lives for ourselves alone and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Some of us have a deep uh, feeling that we're living life unnoticed and, and we would die unnoticed. But let me encourage you today, that isn't true. In your living, you are influencing everyone at all times around you. In your death, you will be speaking in terms of the legacy that you've left behind. Listen to this little quote. In a cemetery, a little white stone marked the grave of a dear little girl, and on the stone were chiseled these words. A child of whom her playmates said, it was easier to be good when she was with us. Even a little child has an influence. It doesn't matter what your age is, you have an influence. Listen to Dr. Thomas Chalmers. He says, every man is a missionary now and forever for good or for evil, whether he intends it or not. All of our lives are, are slapping the water and producing an ever-widening circle of ripples that go to the farthest side of the lake. There's, there's no possibility of us being neutral. We are building up or tearing down in every word, thought, and deed. We are giving or taking in every word, thought, and deed. And so I just want to give us all a sobering reminder that sometimes we think, well, I'm not extensively famous. That means nobody knows my name. I'm not a big preacher. I'm not a big rich person. I'm not a beauty queen. I'm not. Well, that's extensive fame, all right? Few people experience extensive fame, but you are intensively famous. That means that you're famous in your world. You're the star in your movie, in your life. Everyone orbiting around you is affected by you. Did you know this verse in Romans 14? implies that we never sin by ourselves. Did you know every secret disloyalty and every little nasty thing we're involved in creates some kind of a spider's web that catches us and influences others? You know, isn't it true? It's just a matter of time before you progress in a pattern and everybody sort of goes over the wall and everybody knows your business. And you can't sin in isolation. Sometimes you just want to say, oh, get the world, go away. I just want to do my little thing over here. You know what? You can't sin nothing to yourself. It eventually gets out right? You can't even live your life without your interdependent connection to other people. And so whether we like it or not, we are all famous. But here's the point that I want to make. If you look at your bulletin, there's an interesting verse in, in a phrase called, Lord, when did we? In Matthew 25, 37 to 39, it says, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in or, or needing clothes and, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Jesus one time said, the answer he gave was, inasmuch as you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. Did you know that the, the greatest impact of your influence in life is unconscious to you? Did you know who you are precedes what you do? Did you know that? You can say you have mumps, but if you have measles, you communicate measles. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You communicate what you are. Who you are precedes what you do. That means that most of our influence in life is unconscious to us. It's the stuff you don't even see coming out of you. Do you understand? Let's say your goal today is to, to go to a job interview, and then you're, you're just so focused on that job interview, and you dressed up just right, and all you're thinking is, is there anything in my teeth? You know, you're rehearsing your little spiel, you're getting ready, but on the way to that job interview, you see somebody's car broken down, and you've got a little extra time, and, and you remember what it's like to be stranded, and, and everybody, you know, isn't good, and you pull over and you help them. And then on the way in, you forgot you need to get a little soda or something before you go into the 7-Eleven and, and you're kind and you're gracious in all of your dealings with that person in the 7-Eleven. And then you're on your way in to the job interview and there's somebody crying and you just sort of say, you know, are you all right? Is everything okay with you? And they start telling you a bit of their story and you say, you know what, what's your name? I'm going to pray for you. And then you get to the job interview. That's what you were focusing on. But on your way there, see who you are precedes what you do. Your kindness of influence is affecting everybody. Your rudeness of influence is affecting everybody. You know, I met, I met somebody one time in ministry, and they were a wonderful, wonderful preacher, but they were the rudest person that you have ever met in your life to waitresses and stewardesses. Oof. Can you imagine having a business and someone dressed in a clown suit representing your business that went to the bathroom in their pants and they're all loud and weird and crazy and you wonder why your business is dribbling down to nothing and then you see who's representing you and he's in a clown outfit. You would never have a nut represent your business. But sometimes, sometimes we can represent the Lord that way sometimes. So we forget we have influence. Never underestimate the power of your influence. Now this isn't to put a guilt trip on you. It's to say that God didn't have one of you. He wanted one of you, so he made one of you, but he wants you to be you. Just be you all the time. And ask the Holy Spirit to remind you that you may not be extensively famous, like you're on television, but you're intensively famous. If you don't believe it, just screw up. Do you ever, ever notice that? Everybody's watching you. You just forgot. And the devil says, oh, you're isolated and you're, you're, you're unnoticed and you're going to die and you haven't done anything. Just mess up and I promise you, you'll see everybody that's watching your life right now. They'll all come up and they all become Bible experts at the point of a Christian's sin. Have you ever noticed that? They've never read the Bible, but they know that, that a Christian wouldn't do that. I knew a guy that honestly at work, he took, he, he, he'd been there 15 years, he took a box full of paper clips that he needed at this house, and he thought to himself, you know, I'm going to take that box of paper clips right now, and I'll just bring it back. I'll bring back another box, and he put it in his pocket. Three employees have been watching him for years, skeptics, critics. They saw him steal those paper clips, and they were going to hang all their unbelief now on that inconsistency in that Christian. Did you know we're all sinners and we all, we all need God's help and his mercy? But sometimes it helps us to remember to never underestimate the power of our influence. That helps us to sharpen ourselves, to realize it matters who we are in private, alone, by ourselves. Did you know when we have a secret history with God, that will affect our public life. Our private life matters. Our influence is forged in the privacy of our personal history with God. So that when we're around and when we're in relationship with others, we remember that we're intensively famous, even if we're not extensively famous. Now, I want to look at this phrase, Lord, when did we? You know, most of our influence, the unconscious effect of a man's life strikes the deepest. Did you know in the Bible there's a story of the, a man whose name was Saul. He became the Apostle Paul the man who wrote two-thirds of the books of the New Testament. The apostle Paul, what, when he used to be named Saul of Tarsus, and he went around killing Christians. He, actually, it was his passion in life to destroy the church of Jesus Christ. He believed Jesus was a false messiah. He believed the disciples were cult followers, and he believed that it was therefore logical for him as an orthodox rabbi to destroy this new cult that was teaching false doctrine. You get the point, right? Saul thought, that they were cultists, cult leaders, perverting the truth of biblical religion. And so he figured, I'm going to go wipe them out. So he has got orders from the highest court to go and wipe out Christians. 
and he is busy uh, just destroying the church, wreaking havoc, the Bible says, of the church. Did you know there may be some people wreaking havoc in your life right now? But you pray for him. God will deal with him his own way. See, the church was being killed by Saul, and they were praying, Lord, get him. Lord, get him. <laughs> he's hurting us. He's killing us. He's, he's decimating our numbers. And Jesus said, I'll kill him my way. God's got his way of dealing with enemies. And guess what it was? The Bible says that he was standing one day watching the martyrdom of a man named Stephen. Stephen was a godly young man. And in Acts chapter 7, he preached this wonderful sermon about Christ. And, and, and the Bible says that they took stones out and they killed him. He was the first Christian martyr. His name was Stephen. Stephen was preaching a sermon, but he didn't know that Saul of Tarsus, the most important man for the future of the church, was sitting by. And he was unconsciously influencing Saul through his martyred death, through his faithfulness to the message of Christ unto death. His unconscious influence was influencing the most important man for the Christian future. Did you know right now, no matter what you're, you're focusing on as a goal in life, you're influencing everybody all day, all the time around you. You're building people up or tearing them down. You're giving to people or you're taking away from people, whether we realize it or not. And that's what we need to understand, that we want to sanctify our life and say, Lord, okay, I'm not extensively famous. No one's ever going to really know my name, but I am intensively famous to my children. So I'm intensively famous on the workplace. I'm intensively famous in my marriage. I'm intensively famous in my extended family. So I'm going to be the, the person that you want me to be. That's an important thing. But unconscious influence, you know, Jesus said to the disciples, he said, you know, he goes, every time that you go and, and visit someone in prison, he said, you're visiting me. You're saying, no, Lord, that's not you. That's some nasty guy that went out and killed. Some. He goes, no, 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 no. He said, when you're sharing your life and your hope and your encouragement with anyone, the least, he said, we're talking about a street person, someone that can't give you anything, someone that cannot give you any power, they cannot supply any money. Jesus said, the greatest in the kingdom is the person who in their influence serves the least. So when you give someone a tuna sandwich because your heart says, I'd like to help, you're giving that directly to Jesus Christ. Your personal influence connects you not only with that person in prison, not with that person you're giving clothing to that doesn't have a shirt to wear, but you're actually extending your influence from the here to the hereafter. I think if we realized that, we wouldn't be seeking such extensive fame. Mother Teresa used to just pull little children out of the gutter in Calcutta. Now, she was intensively famous to that little boy that she just saved. And she knew that she could only save one life at a time. Did you know you can't save all the children in the world, but you can save one? You can't save all the marriages in the world. You might be able to save one, your own. You may not be able to save every, lead everyone to Christ, but you can lead one person to Christ. Mother Teresa was not pulling kids out of the gutter in Calcutta for, as a photo op. She wasn't like holding the kid up. You know, get another one to be sure. It went through. She became extensively famous, okay? But she used her extensive fame to draw attention to the needs of these children. But she was saving every life one at a time. You may never be extensively famous. In fact, the Bible says God is not unjust to forget your labors of love. Everyone around you may forget your labors of love. They may not see the good things you do. They may not empathize with you. They may not say, thank you for being a faithful daddy. Thank you for being a good mommy. Kids just don't do that. They do that when they have kids. You know, when they have kids and they're quoting you on everything, then they come back and go, dad, you were a wonderful father. <laughs> Mom, how did you do it? You know, sometimes it's a long-term investment of influence. You're not going to get an attaboy right now. You're not going to get a high five right now. Nobody's going to see the value of what it took you to stay in that marriage. But should you know in the long term, and that's how God always judges, in the long term, it's always right to do the right thing. In private, with our secret history with God, because everything about us unconsciously is influencing everybody. Now, it's interesting, I mentioned that the unconscious effect of a man's life is, strikes the deepest, but listen to this second point. The unconscious effect of a man's life lasts the longest. I want to read some statements made from biographers. I, I read a lot of biography, 
right? I don't read a lot of fiction. I read a lot of history. Anybody like to read biography, learn about people's lives? Now, I'm not going to tell you who they're writing about, but listen to some of these quotes with regard to people. Listen to this. Quote, to write his biography was like writing the history of a fragrance. Close quote. Isn't that beautiful? That kind of influence can't be organized. You're a fragrance. See, Stephen was preaching. He was going to be the first Christian martyr. He was preaching a wonderful message, and he didn't know he was only going to get one sermon out before he was killed. How'd you like to be fresh out of seminary, give your first sermon, and they kill you right after the first sermon before the offering is taken? Stephen was just focusing on his sermon and getting that straight, but unconsciously he was influencing Saul of Tarsus, who would later, in Acts chapter 9, Christ would encounter him, transform his life, and it was that ministry of Stephen, and Stephen never knew it. Wouldn't it be lovely to hear that about you? To write her biography was like writing the history of a fragrance. Listen to this biographer who spoke of his subject. He had ever a smile in his eye and laughter in his heart. His coming into any company was like the lifting of blinds and the opening of windows. He lighted fires in all the cold rooms of life. Oof. You see, you can't manage this kind of thing. Who you are precedes what you do. Never underestimate the power of your influence. It's mostly unconscious to you. A young missionary went onto the mission field and felt just worthless. He just felt he wasn't serving. God wasn't doing anything. No one was getting saved. I mean, he came back to the United States for a little rest, and he felt like a hopeless failure. You know, it's just like, oh, I should have gone into plumbing or something. And his friends from the mission field wrote him a letter, and they said, quote, when you left, it seemed as though the flag was lowered and the music stopped. Did you know you have an unconscious influence Never underestimate the power of your personal influence. Most of it's the stuff you don't notice. You're searching for this goal and to achieve that end, and, and you know we're working ourselves to death to get certain things, and it's everything unconsciously coming out of us in the, every point of the journey that is softening hearts or hardening hearts, tearing up, tearing down or building up, giving or taking. I, I want to encourage you. It's important. Not that you be a plastic religious person. Oh my God, everybody's watching me. Don't get anal and strange. <laughs> but just be childlike. Be you. You're an original, not a copy. You're a voice, not an echo. God made one of you. So, so realize you are a window to eternity that's cracked open. What is everybody smelling? I mean, what's blowing through your window? See, people want to, to, to smell a sense of hope when they're around somebody. Did you know you want to hang around people that build you up and give to you and encourage you? Those are the people you want to call on the phone. People that tear you down and take away from you. I call them death stars. They sort of hover over your life and they suck the guts out of you and they get you on the phone for five hours. And when they're done with you, there's nothing left but skin. You're like that, the chickens at the boneless chicken ranch. You're just sort of, you know what I mean? Everything is sucked out of you. Well, you know what? You don't want to be a death star because you're influencing people all the time. And if you're bitter and if you're all upset and if you're angry and you're disappointed, that's the unconscious stuff eking out of your spiritual pores. And everybody around you, you're slapping the water and the ever-widening circle of ripples are going all over the place. So when somebody's bitter and you drink from their fountain, you get bitter water. Nobody wants to drink from that water. <laughs> Somebody told me not too long ago, I don't have any friends. I thought, gee, what a shock. Whoa, wow. Because they're bitter. They're tearing everybody down. They're gossiping about everybody's business. They do everything in their personal influence to alienate and isolate people from people. They divide wherever they go. There's a bomb crater where there used to be a life. There's no mystery to your history. You're intensively famous. It's time for us to choose whether or not our unconscious life is leaving a blessing in its wake or a curse. See, we can choose to be a blessing to other people. We can say, Lord, I don't want to fake it, and I don't want to act like something I'm not, but could you please help me remember never to underestimate my personal influence? Could you help me? When I go to the store, 
I got to tell you a story. It's just us. I met somebody one time. They were the rudest guy. This is the rudest guy I've ever met in the world. It was just not too long ago. It was here at the church. Some guy sticks his head in the door and he goes, what's this? And I said, it's a church. He goes, what kind? And I said, a good kind. What, what's your problem? You know, I mean, the guy had a problem. His tone and body language said, I'm going to jump you and beat the pulp out of you. That's what his tone and body language was saying. And finally, he said, what do you believe? I said, about what? So I'm already, you know what I mean? I, I don't even know who the guy, I find out he's a, he's a pastor somewhere. But I thought, you know what? We're going to have to <laughs> do a little polishing on the PR end of your department because y you know what I mean? You, you alienated me, isolated me, and made me hate God, the Bible, and everything else within 30 seconds. <laughs> so what do you, see what I'm saying? You're, you may not mean it. Listen to this quote. Henry Ward Beecher once talked about influence. He said, who can say, I am my own, I stand alone, unrelated, unlinked, solitary, uninfluenced, and uninfluencing? Nobody. You're influencing people all the time. And, and, and you may not mean it. You know, well, I didn't mean to be rude and make them hate God. Well, you know what? You need to adjust your meaner a little bit. See, you, you said that, but you didn't mean that. We have to mean, we need our inside to link up with our outside. We need our tone and body language to link up with the Spirit of God within us so that the message is right and orthodox, but our delivery is right and orthodox. You can be the rudest person on the block. That's just going to really want people to go to church, right? Heard another story of a young man in England who went to a Methodist church and they said, why did you come to our church today? He said, because my best friend is the most charming man I've ever known. And he comes from this church and I wanted to see what kind of a place would produce such a marvelous life. I just pray that we become the, that person in our personal influence that will be so wonderful that everyone will say, ah, where did they come from? What do they represent? I want to know more about it. Did you know when you're hopeful, when you're encouraging, when you build people up, when your unconscious effect just going from point A to point B is to leave a blessing in your wake and flowers to grow when you walk by? Remember those movies where when you, you, everybody walks by and the flowers all come up and birds sing in their wake? <laughs> Let that be you by choice today. Say, God, I can't do this in my own life, but sometimes all you need is to be reminded never to underestimate your personal influence. This is enough. For most of you, because I, I look at you're mature people. You're not silly. You're not stupid. You look marvelous today. <laughs> so I know this message isn't wasted on you. You know, sometimes you just need a little adjustment. You don't need a big bunch of adjusting. You just need someone to just sort of just nudge you. This is what this message is. It's to remind you, whether you like it or not, there is no such thing as neutral I quoted it early as Thomas Chalmers, every man is a missionary now and forever for good or for evil, whether he intends it or not. There are no neutral characters in life. Your unconscious influence is going out. Now, can we be perfect? No, never. But you can be the right imperfect person that God has intended to use to bless other people. See, an imperfect person says they're sorry when they're wrong. They apologize. An imperfect person says, you know, my heart's right before God. Did you know your heart can be perfect before God, but you're not a perfect person? Your heart can be perfect. God can look at your heart and say, he means well, she means well. But you know what? Other people can only see what we are. And who we are precedes what we do. So it's in those unguarded moments that we really see what's in our hearts. And that's what the Lord would use to say, just remember, you don't live isolated. You're interconnected to everybody. You don't even die by yourself. You're going to leave a legacy behind you. They're going to talk about you. There's either going to be hundreds of people at your funeral or there's going to be nobody at your funeral. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be a legacy of life you've left behind or there's going to be a lot of people going, whoo, thank God he's gone. What's left? What's in the will? You know? <laughs> I was at a dinner not too long ago and... <laughs> <laughs> there was old Papa was at the dinner and he's got his hearing aid in. He's about ready to kick the bucket and all of his kids are around him. 
Ryan reminded me of a bunch of vultures. <laughs> you know, they're waiting for Papa's little, you know, heart to go and see what they've got. You know, you don't want to be the person that everybody's praying that God will take you home. <laughs> All right, I mean, you don't want to be the person. You want to make yourself invaluable to the kingdom of God because of your sweet influence, raising people up instead of tearing them down, giving instead of taking. And, you know, I heard a quote years ago, and I use it all the time. We want to be like the... We want to be like the fragrance and the incense in the temple at Jerusalem. It was beaten finely and crushed into perfectly grain, perfect grains of evenness. Then it was taken and put on the fire, and then it was burnt and it, evapor- it disappeared, leaving only a beautiful fragrance behind. It, when you leave a room, we want people to go, wow, you know? You don't have to be talkative. You don't have to be a preacher. But your life is a letter, and it's written, and it's clearly readable by everybody who's close enough to you to read. Leave some kind of fragrance of life and hope and encouragement behind. That's our choice. We can say, Lord, I can't be what I'm not. I'm not ever going to be that handsome. I'm never going to be that pretty. I'm never going to be extensively famous. I'm not going to be on TBN. I'm not going to be on television. But I'm intensively famous, and I want to be a fragrance. Never forget Never underestimate your personal influence. I want to pray for you right now. I want people to say of you when you leave, what a gift of God. What a grace gift her life is. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now that you would make us men and women of influence that our unconscious dealings with others when we're just sort of on the way to work or we're on the way to a new responsibility that's very important, we nonetheless we'll remember it's all those unconscious moments of who we're cutting off on the freeway, who we're helping or not, who we're speaking kindly to, who we're encouraging along the way, that you would make each of us, Lord, a fragrance that would honor your name that we will never forget when there's just one person in the room or there's 500 people or we're in the car or we're at the market, that everybody is being influenced by us and that we'll not forget the great responsibility that we do not live unto ourselves and we do not die unto ourselves. Now, Lord, forgive us for being a nasty example. Forgive me for being a nasty example, for saying things at the wrong time or not being aware that I haven't eaten and my sugar's messed up and I'm just a little bit mean or rude or curt. Father, forgive me. And give me a reminder always every day that I need to remember that everybody's watching, that I'm communicating a message, and that I'll never be neutral. And Lord, we we ask your forgiveness for every time that we have been less than a window. Maybe we've been a grimy, dirty window to eternity. Wash that window, Lord, so people can see through us to you, so that fragrance is a blessing in heaven come through us as a gateway of life to others, Lord Jesus. And I pray for my friends that they would stop comparing themselves to someone else or to that woman or to that man or to that uh, who makes that much money. Or Father, forgive us for comparing ourselves. We are unique. You didn't have one of us. You wanted one of us. You made one of us. So we ask your, your peace to rest upon your children, being who they are in their unconscious influence to others. And we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Can you give the Lord some praise? Give him some praise.